tell us about the backgrounds that you're making because I everybody in the reptile world wants to make their own backgrounds to do their own foam stuff it kind of creates a mess it can be fun too but what you were doing or the pictures that you're showing me were very different from yeah so i i started playing around kind of designing three-dimensional objects um in like blender or something like that um that i can recreate and print in foam or cut in foam yeah, on, yeah. on a cnc machine and and then and you can really kind of even afterwards you can get in so i i did what sort of foam is it like uh it's uh, you know the pink insulation oh, pink foam yeah 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 okay you know so um i did a i did a fake brick wall at one point because nice. i wanted to kind of do a uh something that kind of felt like a bit of a garden an urban garden for morning geckos and and it was really fun just to kind of recreate that and some barks redoing recreating bark so there, there ends up being a lot of work in the in the creation of the object. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but it's different. But I enjoy it, and it's different. It gives a different look. Yeah. You know, and and then I've started to really try and push it with dry lock. Yeah. And yeah. not that I'm pushing it with the dry lock, but um, something we were chatting about this morning was um, people's plants dying coming in contact with the dry lock so i started to kind of investigate and really research yeah because people often say if you're going to use dry lock you have to rinse it like crazy yeah, you have to once rinse you're it done like crazy or any plants so will die I, yeah so I, I did a little study for myself over over a, a fairly large chunk of time and i started to realize it wasn't the dry lock that was the problem it's the those pigments that everyone recommends using the quick create like the quick the, create yeah pigments yeah ended up being the problem so once i started to use like really cheap um like kids acrylic that's non-toxic um as my pigments i stopped having any problems i started having way more control over the colors i actually wanted yeah because the quick create only and, comes in the three colors whatever and, and it's cheaper yeah expert way cheaper yeah you get a huge so, container um so I've been do I've been doing that for a long time now and never had any. So when you did this like the study, did you actually have like little walls? I had a, and... I had a whole setup of of different pieces painted differently, and tried to keep them in the, in the same environment. So I'd have a tank that would be set up, closed up, um, and have spray systems going and plants growing up them. And, yeah, and, and plants just, die on the dry lock. Plants would or... die early on. Yeah, um, with with all the dry lock stuff, and then it would eventually hit a point. Where I, I guess the outer pigment gets washed off. Had been cleaned off enough that it wasn't a problem. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So and it, it was pretty how, cool. I really enjoyed it. Like you don't put a lot of that quick create dye into your mix typically, you so you can imagine how toxic it must be, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got to be bad. Yeah. Um, the first hint was actually um, a friend of mine had. I was chatting with him. He was like, "It's funny. I never have that problem," and he'd been using the granular pigment. Okay. And that was the first time I kind of went, one second. It's because it's a different... Uh... Yeah, it's it, it's from a different company. Okay, yeah. Um, and it, it obviously produced differently. It's a little, little... It was a nightmare to mix in. Yeah, yeah. Like, you'd get these little turds that would be in there and you'd have to be, like, trying <laughs> yeah. to crush them Your off. Your rotator and, cuff yeah, is burning. Yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah, it. so that was my first hint at, at, at maybe it's worth checking out. Because, you know, like, like Troy Gorberg was talking about it a lot. Rinsing, and I was like, this yeah. is crazy that... We're not finding something else that's you know because there's a, there's a ton of things that are like dry lock out there yeah um so i thought if it's dry lock like there's got to be something else but then the realization that it was the pigment was yeah yeah that's a key that's a key and especially yeah. like you said because it, a it's cheaper and b you have like this insanely yeah. wide range of colors oh yeah like, from. It's huge, like huge range of colors i can go down to michael's and pick up whatever yeah you know a huge tube of it for six dollars yeah, like the, the one you that know? you squeeze yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah and then but what's really cool about using the cnc machine is you're like I, well, as far as I understand, you take an image or a, a 3D render of a, of a thing. So you can actually take like a photo of tree bark or how does it work? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking so, about. If you have a 3D imager, you could do that. You'll have to go around it. Okay. Some of it's messing around with just trying to build textures that kind of look like a tree or whatever, uh, yeah. a tree bark. Um, and then changing how aggressive it is for different kinds of barks. Um, and sometimes you can build off of someone else's work if you're just doing it for your own thing. I actually went through, 
there's topographical maps you can get stl files of the world yeah yeah and so i i i did a bunch early on that were i'd figure out where an animal was from oh that's and then cool. just for the fun of it for like friends and stuff like I I, I'd, I'd find that area and i'd find the topographical map for it and then i'd create a background i create a background with that so if it's mountainous area you get like lots of cool texture or not quite so much but you could kind of get different valleys and yeah that's cool um, so it, it was really kind of fun to give that that idea as well as like you know you know for uh for fatty for daffy's reptile i did uh um I did like a logo in a background for okay, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did the same thing for for a couple stores or well a store in Montreal, Monarch. So, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just kind of just fun stuff for people I know that I appreciate. Yeah. You know. Well, both those things just unlock so much it does with the world. I mean, it, it, there is something said to be doing like something handmade and being able to carve the stuff, but it really does take a long time. And it, it creates a mess too. It 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 is. It's a long time to create. And and some of the stuff like I was, if you're trying to tie in a side panel with a with a back panel, yeah, even just that junction point can be a nightmare because oh, you're just outlining so, it. Yeah, and then if you're trying to incorporate, oh, okay, maybe I could like do a tree. I want to try and combine it like some three D printing with some back or the CNC foam background yeah, yeah. CNC stuff, and try and see how that is. Yeah, you yeah, know, especially yeah. if you're using um, things like grouts and stuff like that. With it, you can really, you don't have to worry about. It can blend in pretty yeah, easily. Can, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I think there's so much potential here. Yeah. It's a, but I think it, that's why I wanted to make sure people, heard, I already see that someone said uh, yeah. it's an invaluable tip, the dry lock thing, because it really is. Like oh. everyone's like, oh, my plants are dead again. Yeah. And I actually just experienced it too. I'm like, oh, there's like a pothos dying off. I'm like, yeah. Uh, when does pothos die? It doesn't die. No, exactly. <laughs> it's like the invincible plant. Yeah. You know? And luckily, you know, it's re sprouting and everything. But, yeah. I thought, but plus, too, my mind was like, my animals in there yeah oh exactly like, and that's, that's what sort of just scare me where i was like i have a lot of and at the time of those experiments i i still had a lot of dart frogs and stuff where right. amphibians like they just have to look at something and they absorb it exactly you know yeah. so so i was very i felt very aware of of that but yeah that was a for me that was a game changer kind of discovering that yeah yeah that's cool yeah well we've already exceeded our time by 30 minutes almost yeah. this was awesome we'll talk more tomorrow because there's a lot more for you to talk about too maybe we'll bring on some of your 3d stuff tomorrow yeah, we can show yeah people. Sure. that'll be really cool um is there anything else i don't think so i think we know we should thank you everybody yeah thank you everyone for watching yeah. this was awesome uh, i don't know how many people are here there's definitely people in the chat i guess it says right there 13 people are in oh look at all you that's yeah. cool Next, tomorrow i need to have some ear thing yeah, we gotta. Get, yeah, maybe I'll get you some headphones tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll play around with that right away. Anyway, yeah. thank you all so much. I think uh, Greg and I are gonna get some lunch and do a couple laps in here. And if you enjoyed this, we'll do another one tomorrow, same time, eleven thirty a.m. Eastern, and we'll have new, fresh faces on. Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks, Greg. All right, guys. Have a good night. Adios. Hey there, thank you very much for watching that clip from the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo live stream. If you want to watch more clips, you can do that here. Or if you want to watch one of the full unedited episodes, you can do that right there.